Oh, the tuck planche push-up. Simple in its design and ability to increase your shoulder strength and stability. However, it's difficult to perform with perfect form. Learning this skill offers a doors to inhuman amounts of strength, even from home, with skills like the straddle planche, press to handstands, tuck planche push-ups, and many more. So if you're struggling with your tuck planche, I'm gonna show you how to get past this and how to do it with perfect form as quickly as possible so you can move on to your next calisthenics goal. And we're starting right now. Hey guys, it's the Jack Vegan back again with another video. And yes, we've got a new setup. We've got a new background, new camera. So let me know what you guys think. We've got big plans for this channel. And if you're new here, we're all about ethics and calisthenics. So if you like that kind of science-based content, we follow the science here on this channel. So if you like that, then please hit that subscribe button as we're trying to get 200 subscribers by the end of the year. And we've received so much love recently. So thank you guys so much for that. And without further ado, on to the video. The Tuck Planch Form. So first thing first guys, I'm gonna show you how to do the tuck punch with good form so you know if you're already doing it correctly or if you have to tweak a few things. And bear with me guys because we're gonna to have to go into detail because this setup is very important because you're gonna use this setup for every other planche move that you use later on. So if you move on to the advanced tuck or the straddle planche, this will be the same setup. So I'm gonna go into detail so you guys get it right because you wanna be getting this right now and not having to change things later. So just a quick note, all the planche moves put a considerable amount of strain on your wrists and your shoulder girdle. So it's really important that you stretch out your wrists, your shoulders, warm up your shoulder girdle beforehand so you're ready to do this move and you prevent injury. Now to do the tuck punch, we put our hands on our parallettes or on the floor. If we're doing this on the floor, we could turn our hands out slightly and this will reduce the amount of stress on our wrists if you're finding it painful. However, keep up with the wrist flexibility work as this will help reduce the pain over time. Now, I like to do them on the floor with my wrists out turned. However, with parallettes, I usually keep them straightforward and parallel. So now that you have your hands set, the next thing to do is start protracting your scapula. So let me explain those two terms. So the scapula, you can think of this as the muscles of the upper back to keep it simple. And then to protract just means to extend. So to extend your scapula or to protract your scapula, all you're doing is pushing into the ground, which is extending your arms forward. This causes your upper back to round. So a cue to know if you're protracting your scapula or not is to look on a video. And if you see your upper back rounding, then you know you're protracting your scapula and your shoulder blades will come down a bit. Now you'll see people in clips doing the planche and tuck planche, you'll see their upper back rounding and this is them protracting your scapula and you do this to keep yourself in the most stable position your body can be while in the planche move. So I hope that made sense. So from now on, when I say protract your scapula, all I mean is extending your arms or pushing into the ground, putting your shoulder blades down and causing your upper back to round, keeping yourself in a stable position. So once you've protracted your scapula, you wanna start leaning forward until your shoulders come in line or go just past your hands. And keep in mind, you wanna do this all with straight arms. So you need to be contracting your triceps a little bit to keep your arms straight. So these two concepts I've just talked about, protraction and leaning forward over your hands, give you elevation. So as you protract your scapula, round your upper back and extend into the floor, and then lean forward over your hands, you should start seeing your knees come up off the ground, and then all that's left to do as you elevate is just to contract your core and try and get your hips up. Your hips should get up till they're in line with your shoulders, so you should be able to draw a straight line from your shoulders to your hips, and this should be parallel to the floor. And that's basically it. Then you've got a perfect tuck planche, as long as you're holding this with straight arms, contracting your triceps. And that's it, that's the tuck planche. So it does sound quite simple when you break it up into protraction, leaning forward, then elevating yourselves, and then keeping your hips up with straight arms. However, you can have problems with each of these different parts of the tuck planche. But in this video, I'm gonna go through the common problems with each of those different parts and address them and give you solutions and actual exercises you can do. And over a few weeks, you'll be able to solve these issues and be able to move on quickly to your next calisthenics goal. Common problem number one, I can't push myself up. So this problem is when you set your hands in the correct position, you start protracting your scapula and leaning forward and pushing as hard as you can into the ground and nothing happens, you just don't elevate. So there are two things that could be going on here. So either you're currently unable to apply enough force into the ground while protracting your scapula due to a slight lack in strength, 
or you're not leaning forward enough due to a lack of wrist flexibility. So we know these could be the two potential issues because remember, protraction plus lean equals elevation. So we know either the protraction or the lean forward is one of the issues. So to fix the protraction problem, I'm gonna suggest doing scapular push-ups. To perform scapular push-ups, you get into the push-up position with your hands at shoulder width apart, and then you push into the ground, extend your arms, pushing your shoulder blades down, protracting your scapula. You then do this for reps, just going up and down, protracting your scapula. Aim to be able to do this exercise for four sets of 10. What the heck? <laughs> Jeez. So now that's the protraction part covered of this common problem, but now the lean. So to fix the lean, I would recommend recording yourself and seeing how far you're actually leaning forward. So you know if you're leaning forward enough, your shoulders should be in line or just past your hands and, and compare this to clips of other people as well. So now if you're seeing you're not leaning forward enough, then I'd re recommend doing an exercise that you're going to be doing even after you've learned the tuck planche, which is the planche lean. To do the planche lean again, get into a push-up position with your hands shoulder width apart. You can turn your wrists out again as if you're doing a tuck planche, so you can turn them out slightly. And then you want to protract your scapula while doing this constantly. And then you want to lean forward past your hands as far as you can go. You can also do this for reps, so you can go back and forward from a downward dog position into the planche lean and do this for reps, leaning as far forward as you can. And if you're doing this, then I'd say do eight to 10 reps, four sets as well. My arms bend in the tuck planche. So if you're having this problem where you're getting into the tuck planche and then you start leaning forward or midway through your arms start bending, this is actually an indication that your anterior deltoid, your front part of your shoulder, is actually not strong enough to hold your weight up in that position. And here's why. So guys, you need to remember that your body is always trying to put you in its strongest or most stable position in any movement. So think about it, the tuck planche is not a very common movement. You're not usually in that position. So you might not have the stability to hold your own weight up in that position. To compensate for this, your body tries to get the biceps involved to actually hold up your weight in that position. And that's why your arms might start bending. So if you're having this problem, it's actually an indication that your shoulders are not as strong as they should be to hold you up in that position and your body's trying to get your biceps involved. So to fix this, I'm actually gonna recommend doing a few different exercises, but depending on the equipment you have available to you. So if you have no equipment available to you, I'm gonna suggest doing planche leans. This is a very important planche exercise that you should always be doing. And I talked about it early in the video. So if you skip to this portion, then just scroll back a bit to where I talk about planche leans. So if you have resistance bands available to you, and if you don't, I highly recommend investing in some resistance bands because especially if you're serious about calisthenics training, because these are things I use every calisthenics training session. So I'd highly recommend getting those. But if you do have them, then I'd suggest doing lateral raises, front raises, and band pull apart, as I'm showing you on the screen now, because these will help strengthen all heads of your shoulder and subsequently help your bicep get less involved as your shoulder strengthens. So if you have dumbbells, I'm gonna suggest you do an exercise called the dish. All you do is you get on your back um, on the floor, then you lift your legs up, contracting your core, you keep your arms up with straight arms and try with your palms up facing the ceiling and try and keep those dumbbells off the floor. So this is a great exercise. It works your core simultaneously while working your anterior deltoid as you're working that straight arm strength. However, only do this exercise with light weight as it puts a lot of stress on your elbow joint. So again, only lightweight guys. And then you can also do this for reps, lifting the weight up and down, or you can just hold it, but this will help increase your straight arm strength. I can't get my hips up and in line with my shoulders. So if you're struggling to get your hips up in line with your shoulders, chances are your core is lacking just a bit of endurance or strength to get your legs tucked in and to lift you up. So to fix this issue, we're gonna try and strengthen the core in a position that's specific to the tuck planche. If you have high parallel bars, I'd recommend doing tuck planche swings. So this is when you get into a tuck planche position, so you just tuck your knees in and then you do swings back and forth. And in the highest position, you're gonna really try and extend your arms, protract your scapula and push into the bars and try and slow yourself down on the negative. So you're gonna go up, swing up, and then try and really slow yourself down. Doing this over time, over a couple of weeks, you're gonna go slower and slower on the way down. And this will help you with the positive, which is when you push into the bars and get your hips up. 
So this is one method that you can use if you have high parallel bars. If you don't have parallel bars, we're gonna to go to the floor and do an exercise called the tuck planche pumps. Tuck planche pumps are when you get on the floor, then you push into a tuck planche position and you're just gonna try and swing for a second and just get your hips up into the correct position and then come back down. So these are just little pumps getting into the perfect tuck planche position with straight arms and then coming back down. So to summarize, we went over the perfect tuck planche position where you get your hands in the perfect placement for you. You then protract your scapula, lean forward, elevate yourself and then get your hips in the correct position. We then went over common problems that you guys might be experiencing. The first one was not being able to push and elevate yourself where we fix using scapular push-ups as well as planche leans. We then solved the bent arm problem where if you were getting into the tuck planche and bending your arms, we would fix this using, again, planche leans as well as, if you had them available to you, the dumbbell dish. We then solved the problem that if you're unable to get your hips up in the correct position, depending on the equipment available to you, you would do tuck planche swings, but if you didn't have parallel bars, then you do tuck planche pumps. But guys, let me know if there are any problems you're having with the tuck planche that I didn't put in this video, and I'll try and answer them down in the comments below. But if you like these science-based calisthenics tutorials, as well as other fitness and health-related content, then please subscribe. As we're, again, we're trying to hit 200 subscribers by the end of the year, and it looks like we're gonna smash it thanks to all the love you guys have given me recently. So thank you so much. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I've been the Jack Vegan, and I'll see you in the next video.